All right, let's have a second go at this. This is the dbrand Project Kill Switch, the highly anticipated case from one of the biggest brands and accessories. A few months back, just before they were about to launch the original version of this case, they sent me one of them, and I really loved it. I've had my Project Kill Switch case for just about a week at this point, and it's pretty much as awesome as the previous model, though there are a few minor issues that we'll get to here in a minute. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a full and proper review of the original kill switch out before they postponed the, the uh, original design. So this video is going to serve as much of a review of the final project kill switch as it is a comparison to the original. So why did they cancel the previous design? Well, it's because on some models of the Steam Deck, the magnetic kickstand would harmfully interfere with the Delta fan. Given the fact that there was no reliable way for a user to know if they had the Delta fan or not at the time, dbrand decided to scrap the design and replace it with a mechanical attachment point instead. Now, given that the attachments here are the star of the show, let's talk about that first. The mechanical attachment point is designed to allow dbrand accessories to connect to the case. And currently the only accessory that I have is the kickstand. Now the kickstand is nice. It works well to do exactly what it's supposed to do. It props up your deck so that you can use the screen while it rests on a table or the like. It basically turns the deck into a Microsoft Surface except usable. The kickstand also has four slots on the underside for SD card management. For those of you who want to be swapping out these expensive tiny cards on the go. Of all the SD card management options I've seen, this is a good one. But from here, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the reimagined mount point. Now the mechanical mount feels more solid than the magnetic version did. And that means that I expect other accessories to feel more securely attached with this new model, especially if dbrand wants to release something heavier like a battery down the line. This case allows attachments to be in one of three distinct orientations. Now with the kickstand, there's really only one right way up, but I can imagine other attachments being able to mount in different orientations. And I could see that as being somewhat of a feature. Finally, dbrand has plans to release the STL files for the attachment point that will allow the community to make their own compatible accessories, a pro move on their part for sure. The cost of incredibly strong magnets and integrating them into any design would have meant that the previous mount would have been much harder for the community to source components and construct compatible accessories for it. Now, while there's nothing particularly bad per se about the mechanical mount, there is something to be said for the simplicity and the elegance of a magnetic attachment point. With this new case, removing the kickstand requires twisting counterclockwise to detach any accessory and the other direction for attaching. This will require that anything you attach must have enough clearance around it to twist it on and off. Now, this wasn't the case with the magnetic kickstand. Plus, magnetic attachments self-correct and easily uh, slot into place. Here I've found myself kind of fumbling to find where the tri-lobe uh, mechanical points actually fit into the uh, case itself. All right, so that's enough about the mount point. Let's talk about the rest of the case. Now, I'm absolutely in love with the design here. I mean, the case adds a little bit of girth to the device as well as some heft. For me, neither of these are issues. However, I get that there are folks out there who aren't as big as I am who may have issues with adding more to the deck, especially considering that the deck isn't small to start with. The modest size increase is not for nothing though. First, it slightly changes how I access the buttons on the deck and I feel it adds a degree of comfort over the stock grip. Second, it adds a layer of protection to the device. And third, it provides a mating interface for the travel cover. And we'll get to that in a second. The texture of the case feels great to me, adding to a more solid grip and confidence while holding it at awkward angles. Similarly, there are these four smooth plastic accents mirrored on the grips that offer a nice aesthetic touch. The fit here is to be commended as well. While putting on or taking off the case is not for the faint of heart, once it's on, it snugly contains and protects the deck. And this is doubly impressive considering the composition of the case. The firm rubber means that it doesn't stretch much, and yet it perfectly conforms to the deck chassis. This is in stark contrast with some of the other cases I've tried, where it, there were either low tolerances that let the deck move around inside the case, or the case was made of silicone that would awkwardly slip and slide around the deck. Now, rounding out the basic kill switch package is your choice of complimentary vinyl skin. You can pick from 31 different designs on their website. 
Now, with the original unit that they sent me, uh, they provided me with two premium skins, the Glossy Teardown, which is the one I have applied to my deck right now, and the Ultra Matte Teardown. From a distance, both of these skins provide a convincing illusion of a clear front shell, and I love how they look. With this case, however, they sent me the Switch Deck skin. Honestly, if I hadn't already applied the Teardown, I would have had a hard time choosing between the two. While I'm not hugely keen on the idea of skins, I do have the skin applied to mine in order to differentiate it between the two decks that we have here at the studio. The other deck that we have here might just get the Switch Deck skin applied to it soon. And surprise, there's one other thing that I wasn't expecting here. My new case came with an adapter for the official dock. Seeing as this case makes the deck too big to seat into the official dock, dbrand shipped me an attachment which connects to the dock and allows the deck to sit comfortably while wearing the kill switch. Furthermore, they have a pass-through USB-C attachment that makes the dock's USB-C cable compatible with the kill switch case. And if I'm being completely honest, I wasn't using the kill switch case that they originally sent me on my Steam Deck. And that's because at the time, the kill switch case made the deck physically incompatible with any of the docks that I had on hand. And since Emily and I have been live streaming deck gameplay weeknights on my second channel, it was kind of a necessity to have my deck be compatible with a dock. So that's it for the essential kit, but there are other things that you can buy that are not part of the kit. While some of them aren't required, I think one of them is an absolute necessity. But before we move on, I gotta ask, why haven't you liked that smash button yet? Once you do, you're well on your way to seeing more content just like this. You can also subscribe if that's more your speed. If you haven't signed up for the Steam Deck giveaway that's gonna end in February, make sure you use the link below to do that. And now, back to the video. The travel cover. It's probably my favorite part of the kill switch. If you're buying a kill switch and not opting for the travel kit, or at the very least the travel cover, you're doing yourself dirty in my opinion. You just need to slide the cover over the triggers and marry the bottom with the nubs on the bottom of the case. And then, boom, it's protecting the screen, the analog sticks, and all but the grip buttons from drops and other wear and tear while on the go. The best part about this is that the kill switch no longer requires the official carrying case that Valve provides. While I love the premium feel of the official case, it adds far more bulk to the Steam Deck and is just harder to make space for when packing a bag. Ditching the carrying case in favor of the kill switch frees up more space in any bag and conveniently fits into my favorite backpack. No exaggeration, when I went to Florida last summer, I had to remove the partitions in the camera compartment of my backpack to fit the case in there, and even then only fit it at an angle. If I had had the kill switch, I would have been able to fit it in the top compartment of the bag and left more space for my other equipment. Next are the stick grips. They provide an extra bit of tactility to the analog sticks. Honestly, I put them on and haven't given much thought about them since. While here I have the portal theme set, I can't seem to find them on dbrand's website. This kill switch kit came with black grips and it seems like they're the ones you're going to get if you buy them. They're nice, I, I like them, but I don't really have a whole lot to say about them if I'm being honest. And finally, the tempered glass screen protector does not come in either of the two kits on offer and must be purchased separately. I was hesitant to install the glass they sent as I have the 512 gig model, but I did anyway, for science. While I wouldn't call it a mistake by any means, there's definitely more glare than I was expecting to have with the protector installed. The thing is, with the screen off, the protector basically acts like a mirror, though this is not much of an issue when you're playing a game, at least for me. Now the attachment point is designed for accessories, both first and third party. Presumably they wouldn't have gone through all the trouble of designing, scrapping, and then redesigning this case if they didn't have plans for an extensive lineup of attachments for the case. According to the Killswitch website, quote, see this mounting hardware? In addition to providing an attachment mechanism for the removable kickstand, it also gives us an opportunity to gouge you on additional attachments in the future. Consider yourself warned. What will those accessories turn out to be? Will they be as overpriced as their marketing material seems to imply? We'll have to wait and see. Now, I wanna have a sidebar about the packaging. I, like many folks, am a sucker for premium feeling packaging. I mean, that's really why premium packaging exists. Cardboard coated in a soft touch rubber-like material is especially nice. And that's exactly what dbrand's done here. It's very nice, a rubberized box with a glossy relief of the Steam Deck on front the sides and the back, with a pearlescent-like sticker on one side. 
However, while the box is quite svelte and the high quality feel appeals to my monkey brain, I'd much rather have just a plain cardboard packaging. It's easier to recycle and in the end would cost less for the end user anyway. And it's not just dbrand here, I'd like to see that across the board. So if you've found that you want to travel more with the deck or you've been searching for a killer case, I'd have to say that the kill switch is impressive. The essential kit comes in at $59.95 and the travel kit at $74.95. Those prices may sound steep, but for what you get, I think it's well worth the price. I would recommend the travel kit simply because the cover makes this product worthwhile to me. I personally wouldn't bother with any case, let alone this one, if it didn't come with a travel cover like this. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you have a kill switch case? How do you feel about it? Leave a comment and let me know. I wanna give a special shout out to my YouTube members and my patrons, without whom I would not be able to do this. Many of these guys have been supporting the show for years and I absolutely adore them for it. If you wanna see this show grow and you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can use the links below to become a YouTube warrior over on Patreon or as a YouTube member. And thank you. That's gonna do it for now though. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for spending time with me here today and I'll see you guys next time.